the wolf began to jump wildly, trying to get loose. Good afternoon. Welcome to the April 19th Salina City Commission meeting. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Larson. Here. Commissioner Angel. Here. Commissioner Arpke. Here. Commissioner Jennings. Here. Commissioner Peck. Here. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. At this time, we have our citizens forum. This is where anyone from the public can come up and speak on any topic, not on today's agenda. Please step forward to the microphone, give us your name and address. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. I'm Phil Klima from 917 South Santa Fe, and on behalf of all of the Lee District members, we would like to extend our sincere gratitude for the wayfinding signage. We think it looks awesome. We appreciate all the staff's efforts and their ability to not hang up when they saw me on the caller ID. <laughs> but thank you very much. We're very excited to have it input. Thank you. And for those back home that don't know what she's talking about, our wayfinding signs are in. So if you are on the interstate headed into town or if you are in Salina and you're looking for certain things downtown, there are signs now that tell you how to get where you want to go and they are beautiful. The art and the colors are really nice. So thank you for that, Phil. Any other comments? Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, members of the commission. Tim Rogers, Executive Director for, for the Salina Airport Authority. Do have a couple of special guests I'd like to introduce to the full commission today. Uh, Mr. John Beardsley, the chairman of Seaport Airlines, uh, and Rob McKin McKinney, who is the president of Seaport Airlines, our new uh, provider of scheduled air service for Salina, Kansas, and Saline County, and all of North Central Kansas. They had their first flight today, and there will be an open house tomorrow, beginning at noon, for the public to come out to the MJ Kennedy Air Terminal and learn more about Seaport Airlines and the service that they would they they will be providing. This time, I'd like to ask Rob McKinney, the president of Seaport Airlines, to come up and uh, introduce himself to you in a short uh, introduction about Seaport. Rob? Well, thank you very much. I would like to personally thank the uh, community of Salina for selecting us, and I'm here just to reassure you that uh, you'll be glad that you did. We uh, our, our three trips a day started today. We are very excited to be here on behalf of uh, John Beardsley and all 165 Seaport employees. We encourage you to come give us a try, and uh, once you fly Seaport, you'll never try anything else. Good. Thank you. Welcome to Salina. Any others? Wish to come up to the podium? No, if not, we will continue with awards and proclamations. Item 4.1, the week of April 14th through the 24th, 2010, as National Volunteer Week in the City of Salina, Glenn Steyer, the Volunteer Connection Advisory Chairman, will read the proclamation. Uh, actually, I am going to introduce member of our youth advisory board who will read the proclamation. This is Lee Weiner and he will read the proclamation. Lee. Proclamation of the City of Salina, Kansas. Whereas experience teaches us that government by itself cannot meet all of our city's social and environmental needs and whereas volunteers both individually and in groups of all ages and sizes can take action that creates positive change in our community. And whereas the giving of oneself in service empowers both the giver and the recipient. And whereas hundreds of volunteers connect with service opportunities in dozens of area community service agencies, governmental offices, educational and healthcare institutions each year through the volunteer connection. And whereas volunteers are vital to our future as a caring and productive community. And Whereas this week has been set aside nationally to recognize volunteers for their commitment to service and to celebrate their contributions. And 
whereas our city's volunteer force of untold thousands is a great treasure. Now, therefore, I, Lucy Larson, Mayor, hereby proclaim April 18th to the 24th, 2010, as National Volunteer Week in Salina, Kansas, and urge our fellow citizens to honor all those who contribute their time and talents to better our community, to celebrate the many accomplishments that have resulted from their actions, and to join in reaping the rewards of service to others through volunteering. Signed, this 19th day of April, 2010, Lucy Larson, Mayor. Do you have any events or anything scheduled in observance of your volunteer week? Um, this Saturday, we are doing a project to celebrate Earth Day, and we will be cleaning up the downtown area of Salina. So I guess if anyone, if anyone wanted to help, uh, there's, I think there's some release forms and stuff, so, yeah. Thank you very much. I have a signed proclamation for you. We do not have any public hearings and items scheduled for a certain time, so we will proceed with the consent agenda. Item 6.1, approve the minutes of April 12, 2010. Item 6.2, accepted acceptance of a drainage easement dedication in lots four and five, block one in the Grand Prairie edition. Item 6.3, award bid for two servers in a storage area network to Eagle in the amount of $27,020.36 and and five standard server licenses and two SQL server licenses to CDWG in the amount of $10,344.13 with the stipulation of half of each amount to be divided equally with Saline County. Item 6.4, award of bids for 50 PCs with Windows 7 professional operating system to New Tech Solutions in the amount of $29,650 each. Item 6.5, resolution number 10-6729, authorizing an agreement with Hooper Sound Productions to provide light and audio production services in, at the Smoky Hill River Festival. On 6.4, that was a total amount, wasn't it? Or was that each? 29,650? That, that's a total amount. That, that's the total. Yes. That's what I thought. Uh, is there anything from the uh, consent agenda that a commissioner wishes to have pulled? If not, I'll ask for action. Mayor, I'd move we approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion passes 5-0. There is no development business, so we will proceed with administration. Item 8.1, second reading ordinance number 10-10541, annexing a 4.23 acre tract of land located at the southwest corner of Magnolia Road and I-135 into the corporate limits. This ordinance was passed on first reading April the 12th. Since that time, no comments have been received. Is there any additional public comment? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission for action. Mayor, I move we adopt ordinance number 10-10541 on second reading. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt on second reading ordinance number 10-10541, annexing a 4.23 acre tract of land located at the southwest corner of Magnolia Road and I-135 into the corporate limits. Will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Angel. Aye. Commissioner Arpke. Aye. Commissioner Jennings. Aye. Commissioner Peck. Aye. Mayor Larson. Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Item 8.2, General Obligation Bond Series 2010-A and Temporary Note Series 2010-1. Sub-item 8.2A, Receive Report on B Bids Received. Sub-item 8.2B, Second Reading Ordinance Number 10-10540, Authorizing the Issuance and Delivery of GO Bond Series 2010-A. Sub-item 8.2C, Resolution Number 10-6726, prescribing to the form and details of and authorizing the delivery of GEO Bond Series 2010-A. Item 8.2B, Resolution Number 106727, authorizing and directing the sale and delivery of GEO Bonds Temporary Notes Series 2010-1. Some light reading for us, Mr. France. Some light reading indeed. Um, let me start by introducing some guests we have with us here today. Uh, Ms. Gina Rikoff, 
with Gilmore and Bell, our bond counsel, and she is in her stays in a reasonably good mood. I'm always amazed when we call her that she's friendly on the phone uh, <laughs> after all the trouble we give them. Uh, and then we have David Arterberry and Roger Edgar from George K. Baum and Company who assist us with uh, preparing and marketing the issue. Uh, these actions essentially finalize the uh, sale of the 2010A bonds uh, we, and, uh, and the 2010-1 notes. We did take bids earlier today. Uh, you have a, a detailed sheet on those bids, uh, but I will uh, state that we received uh, six bids on the notes. Uh, the low bid was from uh, Country Club Bank at uh, 84 one hundredths of a percent. Uh, on the bonds, we received uh, eight bids, nine bids, I'm sorry, um, and the low bid being from Country Club Bank at a rate of 2.941858%. Um, we are pleased with those results. We are pleased with the number of responses we got, uh, which indicates that the, uh, uh, our paper is still desirable within the market. Uh, the issue size uh, for the bonds has changed slightly. It is now six million eight hundred and seventy-five thousand. That is a result of the uh, 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 the bids received on the refunding portion of that issue. Uh, so we were able to uh, resize the issue. Uh, the bonds provide uh, financing for a number of projects: uh, landfill, uh, the construction of cell five. Uh, those are scheduled on a four-year maturity so that they match the life of the of the cell. Uh, Bicentennial Center renovation, uh, this is a 15-year maturity and will be retired with uh, pledged guest tax and property taxes. Uh, fire station number one renovation, uh, that is also a 15-year maturity, retired with property taxes at large. And then there are two small uh, uh, subdivisions, both on 15 years, both retired with special assessments. And then finally, there's a refunding of the remaining portion of the 2002A uh, uh, water refunding bonds. Uh, there are about three years left on those bonds. However, we we're able to save approximately $41,000 uh, by going through this refinancing. and. Uh, uh, elected to do so. That's about 5% of the uh, remaining outstanding uh, balance. The uh, Ordinance 10,540 and Resolution 10,726 uh, address the bonds. Resolution 10,627 provides for the issuance of the temporary notes. Uh, uh, the size of that note issue is uh, $2.5 million. Uh, with uh, 1.6 million of that being attributable to the Grand Prairie edition uh, and 900,000 being attributable to the Riffle edition number two. Uh, we anticipate both of those projects will be finalized later this year and they are scheduled to mature next August, well August of 2011, let me uh, be a little more specific about that, uh, at which time they'll be rolled into the bond issue. Um, uh, Moody's has once again rated the bonds. I did uh, provide a copy of their opinion at your places. Uh, we received that earlier today. Uh, they've once again rated the bonds at a double A3, which is a confirmation of our previous rating. Uh, uh, and the temporary notes have been rated as a MIG-1. Uh, that confirmation uh, makes us extremely happy uh, given the uh, uh, financial conditions in which we uh, uh, are living today. Um, projects, all these projects are incorporated within our long range capital financing plan uh, and repayment is manageable within our established policy limits. Uh, action that's needed is to pass the ordinance on second reading and then by separate actions uh, pass the, uh, the two resolutions. Um, I'd be glad to try to answer any questions if you might have them, or I might invite uh, any of our guests to make a presentation if you would so like. Questions of Mr. France? 
The only question I have is, uh, for instance, on Fire Station One project that, that isn't approved, does it affect the the the, the bonding and um, the, the the fees or anything that we've done uh, to secure the financing means for that now in uh, in uh, in advance of, of possible approval of the project? Uh, the project has been approved. It's under design. Uh, uh, it has not been bid yet. Uh, uh, no, that, uh, that uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's a relationship there. Okay. Mr. Franz, can you give us an idea on the Bicentennial Center renovation? It's partially retired with the transient guest tax. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an idea on where that where we speculated how much would be paid off by that tax? The transient guest tax is, 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 has been implemented with a sunset in 10 years, and these are 15-year bonds. So essentially the, the guest tax covers the first 10 years of the, of the issue, uh, and then all the remaining five would be covered by, by uh, um, general property taxes, presuming that that guest tax is not re-implemented at that time yeah commissioners did uh, try to put a, a different picture on it the uh, I think we estimate that one percent generates about two hundred thousand dollars per year roughly and it may go up over time when things get a little better in the economy but for easy math two hundred thousand dollars in ten years is two million the total project for the bicentennial center the phase one and two is two point five million so about two million of the two point five not counting interest costs and do you have an idea are we on track for 200,000 for this? Well, year? this year we're, we're, we've dipped a little bit. I, the last number was 6% below. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Like that. It, um, it, the last distribution was, was lower than previous distributions. Um, we don't know if that is a trend or not at this point. You know, yeah, I think once. Some reporting anomalies, it could be. You know. Yeah, we're not really sure quite how the. Uh, well, you know the uh, travel and training and, and the various conventions and conferences and those types of events will recover coming out of the recession we'll have to wait and see on that but well, I'm not real surprised to see what we've seen here with regards to that tax it's probably less than it has been in some other areas in the country but it's still we still see feel the impacts of that recession and is this I realize you're on second reading but is the renovation we're talking about today the renovations that haven't yet happened yeah that's correct we're since we were just talking about the feasibility study and trying to prioritize what's in that feasibility study, where do these renovations fall within that prioritization in, in the feasibility study? Would they be at the top, or is this something we should wait until we know how we're going to prioritize the feasibility study? Well, most of those fit into more of a timeline when it makes sense to do them. Uh, some of them are reflective of, you know, for example, a project that deals with heating and cooling could affect tearing up walls or ceilings and therefore take you into those projects. So there's a lot of those little mini relationships. This one, the, the really the first phase of the, the full facility was to deal with the meeting conference room areas. So we obviously did the upstairs meeting rooms and did everything but the ceiling and above ceiling and Heritage Hall. Uh, so because of that and the fact that it includes uh, electrical, uh, heating and air conditioning, lighting, uh, and the actual ceiling, I think it ranks pretty high as far as finishing the meeting room part of that. So I think it, I think it fits pretty well for you. Okay. I'll quit monopolizing the time. <laughs> Any other questions or additional questions? No. Thank you, Mr. France. <coughs> Any, uh, I'll open it up to public comment. I'll bring it back to the commission for action. Mayor, I'd move that we adopt on second reading ordinance number 10-10540 authorizing the issuance and delivery of general obligation bond series 2010-A. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt on second reading ordinance number 10-10540 authorizing the issuance and delivery of GO bond series 2010-A. Will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Angel? Aye. Commissioner Arpke? Aye. Commissioner Jennings? Aye. Commissioner Peck? Aye. Mayor Larson? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Mayor, and also move that we adopt resolution number 10-6726 prescribing the form and details of, of and authorizing the de delivery of GEO bond series 2010-A. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution number 10-6726, prescribing the form and details of and authorizing the delivery of $6 million uh, worth of principal amount of GEO Eternal Improvement Bond Series 2010-A. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes 5-0. Lastly, I'd uh, move that we adopt resolution number 10-6727, authorizing and directing the sale and delivery of GEO Temporary Notes Series 2010-1. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution number 10-6727, authorizing and directing the sale and delivery of $2.5 million principal amount of GEO Temporary Notes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same size sign. Motion passes 5-0. Item 8.3, consider a request from Kansas State University at Salina to assist with an unmanned aerial systems training center. Mr. Gage. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. I'll uh, kind of summarize this, and we have others that uh, will tell you a little more detail. But uh, in April of uh, 2008, the City Commission approved a $100,000 grant from what we call the uh, Salina Economic Development Incentives Council funding uh, to assist Kansas State at Salina in, in putting together what we call a UAS, or Unmanned Aerial Systems Program Office. The purpose of that <coughs> was to position Kansas State to actually do uh, research and uh, programming related to unmanned aerial uh, 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 vehicles, in essence, which are basically like a, uh, a high-tech version of remote-controlled airplanes that can carry miniaturized components such as uh, cameras and uh, sensors and things like that and can uh, communicate back and forth. This is a big-time emerging technology that's of significant interest to the military as well as the private sector. Uh, currently, we have a request uh, for a, uh, a grant from the, uh, what we call the SCDIC grant for $200,000. Um, the uh, specifics on the grant are, are included in the packet and we list all the equipment and some personnel costs associated with that. What this does is it really positions this uh, UAS program to go to the next level in a big way. Uh, some of the specifics it provides for immediate data. Uh, it can't, it, it'll help them get to the point of providing immediate data for Homeland Security and disaster response, which is a big use of uh, uh, unmanned aerial systems, uh, integration of sensors, other assets that are focused on safety, security, and emergency response needs. This is a, a cooperative inif initiative of Kansas State at Salina, the uh, Salina Airport Authority, and also the Salina Area Chamber of Commerce, and, and quite honestly to this point, the city of Salina as well. One of the big aspects of this is they are currently close to finalizing a $2.8 million uh, grant with the U.S. Air Force Office of Scientific Research. And uh, the request from the city for $200,000, I want to be very clear, is not intended to be a match for that. They don't have to have that for a match. But when you look at what's required <coughs> as far as the services that they need to provide for that grant, this helps provide the equipment and people to do that. So it's not really a formal match, you know, a cash match, but in essence it makes it where they uh, can viably provide the services for that $2.8 million and leverage that into our community. It also positions them to, to have other partnerships in the military at some point in the future as well as the private sector. Uh, again, the funding is out of the 12.5% uh, the allocated economic development pot of the special, what we call the special sales tax. Again, we refer to that as SEDIC. Uh, we believe this is, uh, complies, complies with our uh, strategic plan. And uh, the action we have before you is to uh, either approve or deny the request for the further growth and development of the K-State at Salina UAS program in an amount not to exceed $200,000. There's an attached uh, draft agreement uh, in the packet that would authorize the city manager to sign that if you agree with that. Uh, I want to turn it over to Tim Rogers, the executive director of the Salina Airport Authority, and he has some other guests from Kansas State at Salina that may also speak. Tim. Thank you, Jason. Jason. Madam Mayor, members of the commission, again, it's a pleasure to be back in front of you to bring to you another grant request uh, by K-State at Salina uh, for the continued growth of the UAS program office. Uh, your action two years ago, almost to the date, uh, took a program from startup to tops in the nation. I just want to touch on that briefly to let you know that uh, the Economic Development uh, Initiatives Council recommendation to you and the allocation of those funds uh, two years ago had a profound effect in taking Salina, Sling County, and the state of Kansas, and K-State to really becoming one of the top three 
facilities or programs in the nation uh, for unmanned aircraft research development and application of military use of unmanned aircraft and the transition to the commercial private sector use of unmanned aircraft. That's no small feat uh, to take a small contribution two years ago and make that happen. The college and the university are working very closely with uh, two, other two other states that are leaders, North Dakota and New Mexico. And the action two years ago and where we are today is now North Dakota, New Mexico, and Kansas, K-State at Salina are mentioned as the top three programs in the country. <clears throat> college and the university are currently working on a memorandum of understanding with the adjutant general of the state of Kansas, uh, General Todd Bunting, where K-State will become the leader across the state in using unmanned aircraft for emergency disaster response all across our state as the agent of the Kansas National Guard. Again, several things working here. Crisis City is up and running. Training is going on. K-State has one, been one of the first uh, colleges to operate uh, unmanned aircraft outside of restricted airspace over a play, over a location like Crisis City. The college is ready to take this next step to become more self-sufficient and then contract even with in even more contracting with private sector companies developing sensors and, and payload packages on unmanned aircraft and also developing the unmanned aircraft and this, that fly and that will fly in the national airspace system uh, for both military and commercial purposes. Um, there's no fewer than about 140 programs across this, the country that are contemplating wanting college programs wanting to get into this venture. So it is an appropriate time to again consider that assistance that uh, city manager just uh, described to assist the college be ready to uh, enter into a $2.8 million contract after pulling in about $1.4 million of grants and contracts with the previous SEDIC grant. And then beyond that, there is, uh, it, I mean, the sky is the limit. There is really no limit. There is uh, other possibilities out there. We have, uh, you have with you today, Dr. Kurt Barnhart, who is the executive director for the Applied Aviation Research Center, which uh, oversees the UAS program office. And the UAS program office manager, uh, Josh Brungart. Again, Josh is, and his family are here in Salina, Kansas because of your first grant. Jobs were created, jobs are being created. Contractors are coming to this community to use the K-State at Salina UAS pro, uh, lab. They're using Smoky Hill, they're using Crisis City, and that activity will grow. Uh, Josh will be available for some uh, brief comments and then I think he can answer your technical questions on, on the grant. Thank you for your favorable consideration of this grant request. Josh? Madam Mayor? Commissioners, um, as Tim mentioned, uh, this this program has really grown from a from a startup to being one of the best in the nation. Uh, what this what this grant means to us is basically the the equipment and the personnel that we need in order to to make make that jump uh, into the Air Force grant. Uh, it would allow for platforms uh, such as uh, helicopter vehicles and fixed wing vehicles. Uh, and the sensors that we need to uh, to stand up to what the military is asking for. So that's basically uh, what we're what we're looking at. Um, and if you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer anything you have. Any questions from the commissioners? I feel I'm a little bit privy to. I, I know a little bit more about it because the mayor will get to sit on on the uh, SEDIC council, but. This is really huge. So I um, didn't realize it till two years ago. Until now, I can kind of see the, the full circle, and we've just begun. So yeah, I think it's fantastic. So thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any other public comment? If not, I'll bring it back to the commission for action. Just have a. a a question or two. Um, the the annual expenditures from the uh, SCDIC, how much do we spend annually out of that account on various? It's really varied. We have a uh, currently have a balance just under a million dollars in the account right now, uh, but it's really varied. In some years, for example, when well prior to the recession, we had more interest because there was more there were more expansion opportunities in the community, and so we were spending more 
on things like capital investment and training, things such as that. Uh, in the last few, well, probably a year, year and a half, it's really slowed down quite a lot. So we expect it to pick up uh, later, but uh, we'd like it to pick up now. But uh, we really haven't spent that much in the last year. This time I'll ask for action from the commi commissioners. Mayor, I move that we approve a request from K-State University at Salina to assist with their unmanned aerial systems training center in an amount not to exceed $200,000. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the request for further growth and development of the K-State at Salina UAS program <coughs> in an amount not to exceed $200,000. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion passes 5-0. Item 8.4, revise the award of contract rejected bid from phase two of the Con community development block grant recovery housing rehabilitation contracts. Ms. Irvin. Mayor and commissioners, the last time I came before you, we um, presented 10 contracts for your approval for the CDBGR grant. One of them was later rejected by the contractor with the note that he didn't feel he could afford the performance bond. So before you have today um, some issues to consider, we ne do need to decide whether or not to pursue, how to pursue um, fulfillment of the contract. And um, your options are to award the next low bid um, for the project number six. Um, or to choose another alternative. And the alternatives are listed on the last page, which include um, the award to the next low bid or Ponton's construction, or to decline the second low bid and to see, send the CDBGR project number six out for bid a second time with the remaining projects. Any questions? Mr. Ponton is, has agreed upon this and he's okay with this? Based on comments he made at the bid meeting, I would guess that he would accept it if it were offered. Okay. I can't speak for him. And he's not here today, I don't think. Okay. Any other questions from staff? Thank you. This time I'll open it up to public comment. And seeing that there is none, I'll bring it back to the commission for action. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve the award of uh, phase two, contract number six for uh, 1220 North Third Street to the next low bidder, Ponton's Construction, and authorize the mayor to sign the contract. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we revise the award of a contract rejected bid from phase two, community development block grant recovery, housing rehabilitation contract, and award it to the next lowest bidder, Ponton's Construction. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion passes 5-0. Item 9.1, comments from Mayor Larson at the end of her mayoral term. Wow, can't believe we've come to that part. And I have nothing prepared. I'm going to go with, I'm just going to go with the cuff, off the cuff. Uh, in the time that it took uh, the sun to, the earth to revolve around the sun, Salina revolved around me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't have a 12-page farewell speech, nor am I going to talk about dung today. But what I do want to do is uh, thank everybody that made this year um, quite memorable for me. Uh, it had some high points and some low points and some in-between points. And uh, what really made it special for me this year is that uh, three years ago, coming into the commission, you know, you really don't know what's what you're doing. And when you get to that full circle after that first year, it's quite remarkable. Uh, what's even more remarkable is three years later when your signature is on a lot of things and you realize that it was um, your term that helped make things happen and you go down the street and you see a, a construction or the aquatic facility, which I think is a, a great addition to our community. and. I'm just honored that I was a, a part of that. Um, I've had a, a great year with uh, my fellow commissioners and enjoyed uh, the last two here with the other commissioners that uh, have are no longer here. But in my last year as mayor, um, while I did shake a lot of hands and I did uh, cut a lot of ribbons and kiss a lot of babies, um, I felt it was really important, I felt it was really important to try to make as many of those extra meetings that people asked me 
um, because it's what Salina is all about. And if um, they had an opportunity of going to another location for a conference or a convention, I was honored that they picked Salina. And it didn't just happen. There are so many people that work behind the scenes on bringing industry to Salina. Of course, I know everyone knows that uh, the chamber is real big at tooting that horn, and they really do have a thankless job, and I appreciate everything that they do for the city. I also appreciate that they're working so much hand-in-hand -hand with uh, staff here at City Hall, which I cannot even begin to thank everybody here at City Hall. Um, I have never had a personal assistant. I am my personal assistant. And while I am not very savvy with all these gadgets that my fellow commissioners have, uh, I, I barely know how to turn on my iPod and use my phone. So I am not one of these that is really savvy about all of this. Um, but I truly appreciate, and she's not here so I can talk about her, but really appreciate LaDonna Bennett for everything that she did this last year to keep me on track. And sometimes she would send me more than one or two emails a day or a week to remind me. And I can honestly say that I only forgot to show up to one thing one time. And that was just because I had it in my head that it was in the evening and it was in the morning. So uh, everything else I have been held on track and I think it was due to LaDonna. Um, when it wasn't LaDonna, I also considered Jason my personal assistant. <laughs> so I am proud that, uh, and, and I do have a, a gift for you, Jason. <laughs> this doesn't smell as much as the gift that you gave me. Um, this is only, I'm talking about cozies. This is only 1,200 post-it notes. <laughs> the other 14 cases are coming to your office later on because that is what I would have used instead of a personal assistant. My desk, my computer, my purse, the dash in my car, the calendar at home, the refrigerator. Wherever I know I'm going to touch something, I have a sticky note to remind me that I've got to do something. And this last year, there is no way I could have had all of those post-it notes on everything. So thanks to LaDonna and my other personal assistant, Jason, and my other personal assistant, Mike, um, and my other personal assistant, Nancy, and my other personal assistant, yeah, you get the picture. Um, so I truly appreciate that I could save all those gazillion post-it notes. The rest are coming. The other uh, little gift that I have is for Luann because I didn't realize how important it was not only to have a pen, but after my attorney friend told me, you really should have a blue ink pen because that way they can tell if you're signing something live or if it's, you know, you can probably photocopy something, a black ink will photocopy black. Never really thought about that because it just goes to show you how unimportant really my life has really been up until now. <laughs> so for Luann, for all the times I used your blue pen, here's a blue pen for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> These came out of Lucy Larson's budget, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, I have a little gift for Mr. Bingston. And I think there's only a few of us that will get it. I, I, I say it with love. Okay. I had a hard time finding an actual Timex watch. And while this is digital, I'm sure that there is something also involved on the mechanism of a digital watch. But thank you for always letting me know what time it is. <laughs> and not how the watch works. It's an inside joke. And of course, I couldn't leave without thanking my family. If it weren't for the support I had at home from my dad, who is here, and my husband, who is here, and my daughter, who said she had to go to, she had to be at work, and I was starting to feel kind of bad that she wasn't here. And I thought, well, you know what? She's in that working force, and she just needs to be making a living. And I know she didn't have a class, so I thought, well. So when I looked up and I saw them here, I really appreciate them being here. Um, uh, she, my daughter is one that f would always tell me when we'd get ready to run an errand, Mom, please don't talk to anybody. Can we get in and get out? And the year that I was mayor, um, this past year, it, it just got a little bit more. And I told her, I said, I have to talk to these people. They have legitimate concerns. And while a lot of them were just 
giving me compliments and telling me that they really like this and they really like that. Yeah, there were some that were also complaining, and so I'd have to listen to them. Um, she did not run any errands with me after about my second month in, uh, as mayor, so I know that she uh, probably thought I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Um, and to my husband, he uh, did a great job of um, supporting me at home, and sometimes he went to occasions or to events with me, and sometimes he uh, couldn't attend, and sometimes I wonder if he, it's because he didn't want to attend. But uh, other than that, uh, I, uh, and I appreciate uh, the support from my, from my dad and my sister and my brother as well. But anyway, without further ado, I think I am stepping down and uh, we're going to be in great hands. He's got a great first row attendance of people here today. I didn't think they were here to see me. Uh, so it has been an honor to serve you as a mayor. It has been a very memorable um, experience. I would not trade it for anything in the world. And I specifically want to thank you, citizens of Salina, for uh, giving me this opportunity and um, letting me serve you. Thank you. good to be queen. <laughs> Thank you. I will now call the organizational meeting to order and call roll. Commissioner Angel? Here. Commissioner RP? Here. Commissioner Jennings? Here. Commissioner Larson? Here. Commissioner Peck? Here. I will now accept nominations for mayor and chairman of the Board of Commissioners. Madam, I move that we appoint uh, Aaron Peck as the next incoming mayor for the city of Salina. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. I now accept nominations as the acting mayor and vice chairman of the Board of Commissioners. I make a motion that uh, we nominate Samantha Angel as acting mayor and vice chairman of the board of commissioners. Second. I think it says chair. Vice mayor. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries 5-0. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, honor Lucy with uh, with this plaque. Um, for those of you who know Lucy, um, she's been a tremendous ambassador for this community. Uh, even though she was mayor, she was simply known as Lucy and still is simply known as Lucy throughout this community. Uh, and uh, almost like a rock star, like Prince or Bono or something. <laughs> it's just kind of a first name type of deal. Yeah, Madonna, that type of thing. Um, she has been an energetic vibrant face for this city commission and and for this community as a whole and on behalf of the commission and the community um, the plaque here turn it this way says uh, in recognition of service rendered by M Lucy Larson as mayor of the city of Salina Kansas April 13th 2009 to April 19th 2010 and we also have an uh, honorary gavel here that also says uh, uh, Mayor M. Lucy Larson, and with her uh, date of service on there as well. Comments? Other than you? <laughs> okay. with um, I would like to thank uh, 
my family and friends who are here today um, and who have supported me over the last three years, especially my wife, Michelle, who, like your daughter, has endured many conversations in restaurants and grocery stores and just rolls her eyes. Um, and I think is probably beginning to count down my final year on the commission. Um, uh, my kids are here today. I appreciate everyone uh, uh, pretending not to pay attention to my son talking. He's working on his inside voice. <laughs> um, also, six months ago, I made a career change and began to work for Solomon Corporation. And I appreciate the uh, ownership group at Solomon Corporation's willingness to work with me uh, on my commission schedule. So I, I would like to thank them as well. So over the next 365 days, uh, the word that came to my mind as I thought about things we'd like to get accomplished um, was challenging. Um, we're continually faced with decreased tax, tax revenue locally, and we continue to be affected by such things that are out of our hands, uh, like the state's tax uh, exemption on business equipment and machinery. In addition, uh, we're simply asked to, to do more with less. Um, our staff continues their exhaust, exhaustive efforts to comply with FEMA floodplain mapping and levy recertification while also working uh, with the EPA on erosion control and discharge from our storm, dra storm, dra storm drainage system. Excuse me. Uh, these are all federal mandates that we really don't have a choice, uh, but we have to deal with. And they cost money, uh, both in terms of uh, hours spent and eventual cost to the community. And we're continually looking at ways to fund them. Uh, our department heads have also been uh, asked to find savings in their own respective budgets and we continue to expect the same level of service, uh, quality service that they provide. Um, the budget process for this commission this year will be as important as ever. Um, it's important to keep a vision for the community's long-term interest while still facing short-term challenges and it's a balancing act and I anticipate uh, that this commission will be faced with some dis difficult decisions and as we expect expenditures close to $70 million this year. I hope to see as many faces uh, in our meeting room during the budgetary process. Um, basically, through conservative planning and management, uh, we're still in better shape than a lot of communities in this area are. And we have some great things to look forward to this year, some examples of which would be the South, South 9th Street improvements uh, that are expected to be completed by October this year and shouldn't uh, be a hindrance for holiday shopping. This is a project uh, in our capital improvement program that's gonna really greatly enhance the retail corridor um, and bring it up to uh, municipal standards where it was currently basically a county standard road there. Um, our street, excuse me, our streetscape and entryway enhancement program that Lucy had alluded to um, basically provides this community downtown and otherwise with some really attractive wayfinding signs in addition to improving and enhancing the entrance entrances uh, where both interstates meet up with uh, entrances to our community. And most importantly, for a lot of us with young children, uh, our first class Kenwood Cove Aquatic Park facility will be completed and open this summer. Um, so in short, I look forward to the challenges and possibilities ahead, and this commission will continue to build on the successes of Salina. And uh, again, I appreciate everyone coming today and look forward to serving Salina in this role uh, for the next 365 days. Is there any other business right now that any commissioner would like to uh, visit about? I'll accept a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Okay.